All right, welcome back to another finals edition of the True Footy Podcast. It's been a good 12 months, funnily enough, since we've done it. Well, 13, because hey. it's been it's a later final series. How are you, Bush? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good round of finals we've just watched. It was it like a real good round of games. I reckon it could go down as one of the best first week of finals ever. I saw statistically it was the closest margin ever between yeah. like the four games of finals. It was like the closest ever margin, 35, and then the next highest was like 52 or something in like the 90s. I'm not surprised at all. That yeah. makes sense. Um I thought they got better as they went as well. What was your favourite final? Ooh. Don't say the Collingwood one. <laughs> I was far too tempted to say it, but I've got to admit, the Saints-Bulldogs game I thought was quite good. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough one. I Yeah, I do actually probably think the last, the, the yeah. Eagles and Pies one probably was I missed the, the first game. two, unfortunately. That's true. I, yeah. Oh, they were all rippers. Yeah, like, yeah. Brisbane and Richmond was an absolute ripper as well. Um, yeah, I saw the margins and yeah, everyone was raving. Yeah, that's it. But... We did sit through six hours on a live stream as well. Oh, yeah, that was that a was marathon. Tough. That was our longest ever live stream. Six hours and one minute. So thank you to everyone who uh, the post the, the post stream was a bit of a marathon as well. <laughs> yeah, it was a big <laughs> night. Yeah, bloody oath. A big night. I hope nobody... Shout out to, to all the fans of it saw us at Metro's Freo and came and said good day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a couple. So that was funny. But um, yeah. before we get into the rest of this podcast, we have a message from our sponsors, aka a pubic service announcement. I'm so sorry. I had to I'm say that. Puffing the chest. It's in the out. script. Yeah. So, uh, for those who, um, <coughs> excuse me. Gross. Nah. Um, <laughs> for those who are new to the channel, you may or may not have heard Manscaped.com have launched their new lawnmower 3.0 uh, product. It is the premium ball head trimmer on the market. Busher. They sent us. Uh, well. One each. Yep. You've used yours. What do you think of it? I've enjoyed it. It's a good product. It, really? I haven't cut myself or anything. It's... And you said it works well on the anus or it didn't? I haven't attempted that region, but <laughs> pretty much everywhere else, it's pretty comfortable. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's too much. Oh, this is the podcast too. I can't really edit too much. Um, yeah, so the third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade, like you said, to reduce grooming accidents so it is extra safe. Um, have you ever had a, a difficult experience shaving your balls? prior to this product push up not really to be fair smallish sample size in that area Gross. So. <laughs> you can't admit that on a podcast <laughs> well when i tell you that the lawnmower 3.0 is premium i mean premium the battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave which means that you can almost sit through an entire football game just purely shaving your nuts huh? that is actually quite impressive when you think about it i mean i don't recommend it don't please yeah, don't do it on a live that'd stream that'd be a but, bit excessive yeah well you'd need a fair bit of shaving cream or something to conjure anything up after about the 85th minute i'd think yeah yeah you need to be like have like be from the mediterranean to need to shave for 90 minutes but <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the coolest new features of this product is the led light to help, help really shed light on your nuts as you as you groom them um and this nifty tool by manscape can make playing with your balls a time to enjoy why when isn't it a time to enjoy am i right <laughs> sure <laughs> uh 7000 rpm motor with quiet stroke technology uh, you know all about a quiet stroke, and let's not forget about the charging stand. We talked about that, how yep. you can set that up in your your communal bathroom yep. in your house so people can see your your lawnmower shaver. Loud uh, and proud. Loud and proud. Um, so if you're listening to us right now and you support the show, uh, you're one of the first people to hear about this life-changing product, and I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Trim that junk of yours, and uh, through True Footy, you can go to their website and using the code TRUEFOOTY20, get 20% off the Manscaped products. Uh, always use the right tools for the job. And uh, crikey, it's time to shave those balls, am I right? Absolutely. Sorry, I stole your line there. I'm just yeah. powering through the script. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. So yeah, um, yep. we got an October extension for manscaped.com. So great opportunity to get 20% off their awesome yep. products. It's a second chance. Everybody help us out if you can. We'd yeah, love it. That's it. Yep. Exactly right. So, on to the slightly less serious stuff, the football. Um, Bush, I remember, usually when we do our finals preview, we do touch on the two teams that got eliminated. Yeah. Maybe we'll leave Port and Brisbane a little bit because we'll talk about them when they play their preview. Yeah, they'll get their bloody wraps. Let's start with the Bulldogs. Um, how do you think they'll reflect on their season? They did come hard late in that pre, uh, sorry, in that elimination final against the Saints. Probably left themselves too much to do. They came back from like four goals down. Um, how do you sort of perceive their season and where they're They'd at? be frustrated, like, with the inconsistency. That's just sort of something that sort of held them back. Like, if they're more consistent, they'd probably be in a better position ladder-wise where mm. they might have had the double chance, for example, if everything had gone right. Maybe not a top four team, but yeah, if they were more consistent, they certainly would have had a much better opportunity to attack these finals. 
for sure. I think I think I'd probably give them a flat C for this season. Uh, winning lo- or losing a final to a lesser experienced Saints side, that will be a little bit bitter for them. I think if they'd come up against a West Coast or a Collingwood. Um, battle hardened teams and lost. It would probably have been a bit more redeemable. No disrespect to St Kilda, but I would say, well, in my eyes personally, I thought the Dogs were well equipped to win that game. So to drop it is a little bit painful. But if you look at their list, like we've talked about how midfield heavy they are. They run from the uh, through the ground so well, but they don't really have too much um, goal scoring power. You, Norton was a little bit underdone this year. Um, didn't quite have the same impact. Josh Bruce was recruited. Didn't really have the impact they wanted. Um, they did have a standout in Mitch Wallace, um, which surprised me was their leading goal kick, wasn't he? According to yeah, Drewsy. Yeah. Drewsy's dropped that stat on us a couple of times. And Caleb Daniel just won their best and fairest today as well. But you brought up an interesting point. Do you think Beveridge, you were talking about this in the live stream, but do you think Beveridge, or to at least what to what extent does Beveridge now have pressure on him? I'd say next year is probably the year for him next at this year. point. Yeah. yeah. Like, but like assuming nothing too ridiculous with the current world climate, obviously. <laughs> if it's a relatively yeah, normal season for him to approach it as... Mm. Which we have to assume at this yeah. point. Yeah, like, I'd say in Australia, it's a reasonable assumption, I think. Mm, for sure. Um, yeah, I think I think he's okay. Because like I said, I think it's a flat C for them. Uh, what they do have on their side is they do have a lot of good youth, which we've talked about. Um, Aaron Norton is one of the... Probably the best key, young key forward prospect in the league in terms of um, how much he's shown so far and how confident I would be betting that he's going to be really good. Bailey Smith in the midfield. Ed Richards is another one um, who you know probably isn't playing that well at the moment, but he's got a heap of potential. So uh, one thing they do have is a lot of good youth. So I think they should be fairly okay with where they are, but they really need to add to their list, I think. Yeah, and they sort of don't want to let the kids get complacent either. Like, sort of like they might be like, oh, we're a finals team, but a little bit more from other people might get mm. it. So they need to think, nah, if I can do more, it'll help the team. They all need to buy in. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Back to back week one exits. Yeah, it's a little bit of a sting, but look, mm. I back them in to, um, to be around the mark again next year. What about my boys, the Eagles? How would you grade their season? Like, what do you think of it? I'd probably go probably C plus. Sort of B minus maybe, but probably closer to the C plus. Really, like they were they were the favourite coming into that game. Like it was at Optus where you was were undefeated prior to that point, I believe. Yes, you're out. Yeah, seven and zero up to that point. Yep, you'd done them in here before quite convincingly. So you'd sort of had the momentum. They were probably I wouldn't say backs against the wall because they had come here before and were familiar with the conditions more than they normally would be. But mm. still, ultimately, like it was your game to lose and you lost it. I'd probably, I'm actually thinking a D for the Eagles. On the basis that, uh, obviously being a flag team two years ago, to recruit Tim Kelly in the way that they did by pretty much investing two years of draft picks into him, I think to miss the top four, even though it was a competitive top four and 12 and five is a good record, I think to miss the top four and go out in week one, that is very close to an abject failure. And the only reason I don't rate them harsher is because... Um, they had a bit of adversity for sure. Yeah, I was going to bring up injuries and stuff. That's yeah. why I was sort of probably somewhat lenient. For sure. But I think I was, I was watching it on the couch as well. And the statistical breakdown of the Eagles this year really doesn't point a paint a picture of a team that's really, really in contention. Uh, they were 14th in inside 50s this year, but first in goals per inside 50. So what we really saw is a terrible midfield. And I think that is one of the most overrided overrated lines for the Eagles at the moment. Star power is there, yes, but the dynamic didn't work at all. This Eagles side, can you imagine if they didn't have Nick Natanui pull out the best season of his career uh-huh. and Tim Kelly playing well, can, or if they hadn't recruited him, this Eagles side probably would have missed the finals. Sure. I'm, inclined, I'm inclined to think that. Um, and they're over a line on their forwards as well, who played really well, Liam Ryan was all Australian. Um, and 19% of their scores were from center, pound, center bounces which is an all-time record. Uh. So that really points to an over-reliance on Nick, Nick Nat, who's been unreliable. Uh, uh, his, his health has been unreliable in the past. So not a great indicator for them. I think I don't think it's panic stations, but I do think we're going to see an aggressive off-season from the Eagles. Some players you might not expect getting cut. I think Lewis mm. Jett is out the door. I think he's going to be... Yeah, that's sounding like the, what, the Reddit rumors and all that the yeah. social media shout all is. Exactly. So I'm going to say a bit of a, a bit of end to the season, no doubt, but... Um, I will say as an Eagles fan, it will, full credit to Collingwood. I think they played really well. Um, and you could tell how much it meant to their fans. Like there's a YouTuber called Swoop Luke who put up an Insta story of him literally in tears after the game because I think um, 
just the significance of going to Perth and beating the Eagles in a year where they've had a lot of adversity. After everything, the Eagles have put them through the past yeah. couple of years as well. And it, I really did feel the other side of it. But I, I must say, and I said this on the stream, um, and I don't think you believe me and probably other people don't believe me as well, but I, I must say, comparing it to the home and away game last year where they came over and beat us by a point in Perth, that hurt 10 times more because I just never really felt that the Eagles were in a shout this year and the, the numbers back that up. Um, so, yeah, that's the mm. way I reflect on it. Um, like I said, we'll cover Port and, and the Lions a little bit more uh, in the coming weeks, maybe next week, because they're going to be in the prelims. But what do you think has been the most significant win this week? Not the best win, but the most significant win in terms of the premiership race. Mm, probably Brisbane securing that home prelim mm. and a comfortable run to a Gabba grand final. I yep. think that's very crucial because even Port Adelaide are probably still going to face a bit of adversity in their Port in their, sorry, Adelaide Oval prelim, and then they're still going to have to travel to the Gabba. Yep. Brisbane have secured themselves the most comfortable way to the grand final they possibly could. True. They get a home prelim and then potentially a home grand final as well. Yeah. And I think for me, and I agree with you picking Brisbane, I think the psycholog- psychological benefit of them beating Richmond, a yeah. team they haven't beaten since like 2009 or whatever it was, 15 in a row, including at the Gabba, I think the significance of that is, is huge. And I think, um, obviously, they've also avoided an away prelim to Port. So, they're in the box seat now, and they're probably my favourite. Yeah, for sure. Like, even the Richmond factor, like, even going into that game, despite all the advantages I mentioned before, including having the game there for their first go-around. Yes. They yeah. still were written off. Everyone was still like, yeah, Richmond had got them. Richmond had the better team. Everyone, mm. No one believed in Brisbane, even though they had yeah. everything going right for them, and yet they did their job. 100%. A huge win uh, for their, like validation or legitima- uh, legitimizing them as a contender i think that was yeah one of the most significant wins of, well, of the season fair to say um let's have a quick look at the semi-finals i am not going to be able to be around for any of the live streams i'm working throughout this whole weekend so i'm gonna have to watch both games after the fact but we got richmond hosting st kilda at metricon on the friday night richmond is paying a dollar 30 yeah, uh pretty after short their loss to brisbane yeah pretty strong um odds and three dollars 45 for st kilda um we talked a little bit about the first elimination final. St. Kilda were really good in that they really clamped down the Bulldog stars. So Geary went to Caleb Daniel, their best and fairest, and really nullified him. And then Seb Ross went to Bond and Pelly and clamped down on him. Do you think, before we go on to Richmond, do you think this win kind of legitimizes St. Kilda a little bit? Did, you, did it surprise you a bit? A little. I did have the dogs going in like a yeah. few of us did. But yeah, the St. Kilda team really held up well. Their young guys sort of... In their first ever final, probably for a lot mm. of them, they excelled. They did their job. Like even if some of them didn't start necessarily, they just held up, did their job. Everyone played their role. Yes, it was a full team effort sort of thing from them, rather than like anyone going too insane and dominating for them. True, they did have a few like key or important like cameos from someone like a Max King who stood up yeah. as a key forward and took marks. Um, it, it surprised me to learn that it was Paddy Paddy Ryder's first ever final. If I'm not mistaken, is that right? Really? No. Now I'm saying that that cannot be right. That he's never Surely won. A, he's never won a final. That's yeah, that's. Pro- I'd yeah. buy that. Yeah, because he was at Essendon when they sort of. Yeah, didn't that's get right. Sorry, I way. messed that up as I said it. I was like, mm, that that is not right. No, no. it's Paddy Ryder's. Um, Paddy Ryder's first ever finals win, and I think that might have been why he was emotional on the final side. Yeah. I remember we were looking at it going, why? Because he's obviously we knew he was injured, but I, we didn't know how bad at that stage. Obviously, yeah, I think we knew then that maybe like it was going to be out for the year, but. Um, yeah, so, but I'm on that topic, St. Kilda do have a few key outs. So, Jake Carlisle's obviously out for family yep. reasons uh, for the birth of his child. So, that's really bad timing. Um, <laughs> but again, that uh, it sort of opens your eyes to the sacrifice these players have made. Like, I think it's been 91 days that Carlisle's been in Queensland and he's yeah. had his family out for a week. So, you can understand why he'd be really wanting to go home. And the thing is, at the time of conception, I was thinking about this before, <laughs> they would have planned it like so it's after the footy season. Like, because regularly there's. Not really footy going on at this point. Realistically, St. Kilda probably weren't thinking at the start of the year they were going to be yeah, at this point. I suppose, yeah. A little bit unlucky there. Bloody yeah. COVID. Um, ben Long has also been susten- uh, suspended as well. So that with their outs, with Carlisle and um, Ryder out, they're losing quite a lot of height. Um, but we did touch on Bear, Max King played a really good game, but they're going to need... Him to do it again. Yeah. To beat uh, to beat Richmond. And um, Rowan Marshall, they're going to need a big game from him as well. For sure, for sure. I mean, I back Rowan Marshall in to have a good game just because we know yeah. how good he is. Um, even without Ryder, I think he'd be all right. 
Um, overall, oh, okay. So like, it looks like Josh Battle might not be fit to come back in either, which is rough because Tom Lynch is likely back for the Tigers. Right. Um, well, we haven't really talked about the Tigers much. I was going to say, remember they threw. They threw everything at Brisbane. Do you say you didn't watch this game? I missed that game, okay, yeah. Okay, so you won't remember. <laughs> um, no, but uh, it was a really, really absorbing game. And I think during the second term that I was convinced Richmond were going to flog them because they just kept throwing every everything at their Brisbane's defence. And I guess with no Lynch, they all kind of like triple team Jack Rewalt. And I think that would be big if they meet each other again, um, the effect Tom Lynch will have on that game. Um, but with Lynch in and no battle and then the other outs as well, the adversity starting to stack up for the Saints. To what extent do you think they could knock off the Tigers with an upset? Well, it was pretty unlikely to begin with, really, because Richmond realistically be teething after a close game to Brisbane, regardless of how it played out. Like, literally, like, just, yeah. just purely looking at the scoreboard, it's obvious to me that they're going to be coming out pissed off, firing, ready mm. to kill whoever was unfortunate enough to win out of that Bulldog Saints game. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate enough to win the game, yeah. Well, do you think there's any chance they're flat? They come out of that, they threw everything at Brisbane, and they came up short... And it's been a long season in a hub. Is there any chance the Saints knock them off? There's a, there's always the chance. Like, you have to you prepare can't... for every outcome. Yeah, in the finals, yeah obviously. Like and yeah, I have been the first to malign Richmond throughout the year. But mm. even my most recent stance has been its finals. They'll pull their fingers out and show their true pedigree. Yeah. So I'm probably back in that and see their true pedigree. That... Even though they did show it in the first game against Brisbane, it's just Brisbane was a better team by the sounds. For sure. Yeah. They. They would have the confidence from being, you know, a champion team over the last three seasons. And in 2018, obviously, they didn't show up in a final. They got pumped. Um, I wouldn't say that we didn't show up against Collingwood, but the difference, uh, sorry, against um, Brisbane, but the difference now is they've got time to regroup, recover, and have another crack, which um, which they unluckily didn't have in 2018. Um, I'm expecting a professional response. And while I'll be th- going hard for St Kilda, um, it's hard to go past the Tigers. I'm going to say the Tigers yeah. by about 18. What do you think? Probably 30. I'd say Ooh, Tigers 30. Oh, significant win then. You yeah, really... I guess it is a significant this game of this year, five goals. But yeah. Richmond, when they get rampant, they can yeah. put the throttle to you pretty quick. Yeah. It would be seriously huge if St. Kilda won. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd love to see it. And then they'd go play uh, Port in Adelaide where they've won this year. So huh. That would be a spicy little rematch. Yeah. Let's look at the other semi. Um Geelong are hosting Collingwood at the Gabba, I believe. Uh, yep. Geelong paying $1.65 versus Collingwood, $2.20. Yep. Geelong were undone in Adelaide against the Power. To what, to what extent do you read into this criticism about them being poor in final? Well, it was undoubtedly they're poor in finals because they've gone 4 and 12 out of the last 16. But do you think they choke? Because that is like the popular criticism right now. It's tough to sort of say choke, like, in these sort of since constant spots like it's sort of like more just like they just come up short rather than Mm. choke like when does choking becoming come up short (laughs) like if if it happens irregularly because you're usually an excellent standard of team Mm. it's a choke but the fact like you said four out of the last four and twelve out of the last 16 yeah a pattern not a choke yeah it's just who they are sort of thing but are they bad at coping with pressure it's just I did, like they might be one of those teams that has the sort of talent and stuff to do well in the regular season, but when you get them in a finals, when a team can really concentrate on them and try a few different things, mm. sort of they might be able to be more counted against when you've really locked in on them, sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know if their their game style, which is quite a slow and deliberate style, maybe doesn't stack up the finals pressure. I don't really know. Yeah. It's it's hard to tell. I'm inclined to. I don't think choke is fair. Um, it is weird that they don't win after the bye. Like the first mm. week of finals last year, and did them as well. They finished top and lost to Collingwood. Again, Collingwood was a great team. Like even last year, even though they sort of went out in the prelim the way they did, it's still a pretty evenly matched team. And Collingwood was playing at home. And then again, this week one, Port is the home team. You expect Port to win that game. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's. I think it is a lazy criticism, like Chris Scott says. And the other thing is, they're often that team that sort of finishes fourth. Fourth, mm. sort of a bit of a common spot for them, like third, fourth sort of thing. So they're often mm. playing in a way initial final. Yeah. So that they lose that. Even if they win the following week, they're going into a rough prelim. Yeah. So that's sort of off in their trajectory. So that's probably a bit of the rationale behind their losing record rather than choking sort of thing as well. Yeah. The other argument uh, for them being maybe not coping under pressure is 
Hawkins going, what was it, 0-4? I think he was 0-4. Yeah, he had a pretty bad game from what I saw. Yeah, uh, something like that. He, he was quite poor, basically, in front of goal. So that, that speaks to like maybe, um, A, there's a huge reliance on Hawkins. So against Port Adelaide, they only kicked five goals. And against uh, Richmond a few weeks ago, uh, where Hawkins was double-teamed because Rowan was out, they kicked four goals. So the goal-scoring power at this club is is quite slim and they've got the MVP forward in the competition. Or not MVP, but like the be- the premier yeah. forward of the comp this year. In form. Yeah, so I think... Um, oh, and further than that, in the last two games against the Pies, they've only com- kicked a combined 12 goals and one of those was a full, fully like length match as well. Yeah. So goal-scoring power seems to be a concern for them. Even if you throw Dangerfield forward, he's not the sort of guy who's going to kick a bag. Like He's probably kicked a few in his time. He's more the guy you put down there to make sure the defenders are honest and yeah. everyone else because you, you can't just leave Dangerfield alone. You have to stay near enough him. You can't go help Haw- help on Hawkins and yeah, leave and Dangerfield. Leave, yeah, even if yeah. he's probably going to spray a few. You know, yeah. I love Danger, but yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. It, and I think that probably is a, um, a worthwhile strategy. Mm. Yeah. The other concern for Geelong is that their end of season form has really been unconvincing. So, like, in particular, that loss to Richmond where they got belted. And then that final round, they nearly dropped the top four because they nearly lost to Sydney in, you know, Sydney were bottom four team. That's, it's okay to end the season in a slump as long as you come out ready to go in the finals and to mm. lose week one and only keep five goals. It's starting to add up a little bit that they're, maybe their form is just going out at the wrong time. Yeah, that's probably a more plausible sort of thing. Like what I was saying, it's more like the way they play rather than choking sort of mm. thing. Like even in those prior years, they might have overdone it early to yeah. get... Because they are an older team. Like They might have put a lot of their effort into getting themselves in the dub top four mm. year after year, sort of regularly being able to attack the finals. Yeah, so there is there is a parallel to last season as well. Um well, we can talk about Collingwood a little bit as well. Again, a brilliant win. And you can probably yeah. contrast these two teams. Is This is Collingwood coming into their own a little bit. Probably one of the better eighth-ranked sides in a long time in terms of how good their list is on its day. Uh, obviously, grand finals two years ago, prelim final last year. Yeah. And I think heavily a victim of bad luck with injury and fixtures. Very bad circumstance like for them this year compared to what they're used to, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, I mean, I know that all teams from Victoria have dealt with it to an extent, but then there's also the injury factor. And I I think if you look at the fixture, Collingwood did actually cop a rough deal mm. even in the context of all that. So, um, like Scott Penderby was talking them up as being, you know, we consider ourselves flag contenders like we're good enough and every team's going to say that. But I do believe it a little bit more with Collingwood. I definitely believe it with Collingwood. <laughs> yeah. Like, they mm. Like, the last couple of years, they've right been in the thick of it. Like, mm. this year, they faced a lot of adversity, and now they're starting to get some of the na- big names back. Like, they haven't had to go in most of the year. Now he's back. Yeah. They've had Pendlebury out for patches. They've had Trelaw out early in the season, I think it was. Mm. And they're certainly yeah. not... Would you say they're certainly not far behind Geelong on talent? Definitely not. They're probably on par with them, if not... Yeah. I'd almost put them above them on talent. Yeah, it's a tough one with Grundy being so horribly out of form... It's probably the difference. Like, if he's on his day, then he's, their star power is through the uh-huh. roof suddenly. But if he's in the form he is currently, not so sure. The other thing that works against the Cats here, sorry, the Pies here is... So, part of the reason they undid the West Coast Eagles is because Mason Gox bobbed up in that first quarter and not won the... Well, I mean, you could say he won the game because he kicked three mm-hmm. goals and they won by a point. But they're going to need him to do that again. He's, he's the guy that... He has not a bad track record in finals, mm-hmm. funnily enough, old yeah. Mason Cox. He annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, fair play. Like, I kind of almost swung to feeling like a little bit bad for him because I know that he's a little bit maligned now because he's such a meme. Uh-huh. So he was popular because he's the American dude and then everyone was like, oh, this guy's kind of a wanker. And then now I feel a bit bad for him because now everyone's almost kind of turned on him. At least that's uh-huh. my perception. So part of me is like, okay, I'm kind of happy for him almost but i really wish it hadn't been against us but um but anyway my point being obviously the lack of a tall key forward in collingwood's forward line mason cox needs to contribute again it can't be a one Mm. one hit wonder he needs to be prominent with two or three again next this week to beat the cats yeah for sure good defense so um, because he's just such an X factor sort of talent. Like, there's no one that size. So, like, if you can kick it to him in the right spot, he just has such an advantage over anyone else in terms of getting first hands on the ball. For sure, yeah. 
and in finals in particular where you sort of just get a bit more of that desperation bomb it sort of footy if he can get his hands on it and actually take a few mm. he's actually not a bad set shot either so once he does yeah, you're do right, all yeah. that it's like it's True. quite possible for him to have an impact off on a game with limited possession for sure because he's pretty useless around the field let's be honest I actually had a look. The interesting thing between these two sides is um, you contrast the goal accuracy from a set shot in the final so far. The Pies are 8-0 in front of goal yeah. were against the Eagles and the Cats are 1-8 in front of goal set shots. Yeah. So it kind of speaks to the... I mean, neither of these sides are necessarily, other than Hawkins, really strong in their goal scoring power. But if one side's kicking accurately, mm. that could be the difference. It was weird because I saw that statistic as well and the Eagles were 8-5, eight and five, 8 goals, mm. 5 in accuracy and Collingwood 8 goals all. So they must have just yeah. had a peppered a lot of behinds like in play sort of thing. Yeah, I think we generate a lot of scoring shots yeah. through set shot because our ball movement is yeah. fairly precise. So, yeah, oh well. yeah. We just, <laughs> that was the difference in the end. Uh, we were inaccurate like if we converted... Well, literally one more goal for their one. But I, I genuinely, without yeah. going on too much, I genuinely thought Colin were a better team all night. Yeah. They led all night. That's for the sure. way it goes. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, I guess the finishing point of this game is I just feel like I get the sense the mindset of Collingwood right now is in a really good spot where they've overcome the shit of this year. They've just beaten their rivals, like not not traditional rivals, but you know, over the last recent few years. Rivals. Recent rivals in Perth. They must be hot as shit right now. Geelong, I have no idea what their mindset's like, but I've just got a good, I've got a feeling mm. the Pies are going to do them here. Yeah, might buy in. So I'm going to tip them. I'm going to tip them in an upset by seven points. They're a battle-hardened side, plenty to prove. Be angry about the last two years of finals exits. They've definitely underachieved this year. they got a big opportunity. They're probably not going to leave Queensland. They won't leave Queensland for the rest of the finals, so level yeah. playing field. I'm going to say the Pies by seven yeah. points. I'd probably... It's tough to go against them, really, I kind of feel mm. like. Yeah. Geelong sort of haven't offered quite enough for me to sort of be fully convinced, whereas Collingwood, I know, I, like I said before, I think they're the more talented team overall. Mm. Like, if, and they're sort of starting to get everything going right for them, so... Yeah. They've shaped up at the right time, and... We're definitely bandwagoning tipping. <laughs> for definitely. sure. Definitely. I think I did this last year, too. Mm. Just tipped the team that played really well in week one. And discounted the so it's always like the lower seeded team compared to the team that's got the double chance. Well, it's hard to look red hot when you lose your first final and play semi against the team who's won an elimination final. I think I tipped I think I tipped the Eagles to beat them last year, and Geelong fans are going to hate me right now because I tipped the Eagles to beat them in straight sets. Fucking ironic that is. Um, But yeah, no, I'm I'm expecting this to go either way. I really think Collingwood are a good side. I really think Geelong are a good side. It's just a case of if, if, if Geelong show up, I think Geelong will win the game. One factor I've just thought of actually that really plays into Geelong's favour is like the key defenders of Collingwood aren't really. Well, Darcy Moore is pretty solid. Oh, but, Australian, but. Yeah, but Tom Hawkins is sort of like a different physical sort of thing. So he can sort of throw his weight around a bit more. Darcy Moore, Darcy Moore is a bit more of a rangy sort of defender True. rather than like a plugger, ficky yeah. type full forward where Tom Hawkins can sort of body him and then sort of box him out and take those sort of grabs. But that all gets undone if Collingwood triple team, in which they might. Nah. <laughs> or maybe they may do that successfully or mm. not. I don't know. But yeah, no, fair point. Fair nah, point. my boy Grand Mars is going to bob up and kick it back. Yeah. You know, you're right in that Collingwood don't have a traditional lockdown like a Grimes yeah. or something like that or a Rance yeah. or a Pierce or whatever to, to do that same yeah. role. But uh, yeah, when... Yeah, I wasn't saying that to bag out Darcy Moore as a football no, game. No, I was just yeah. saying it like that specific matchup and style yeah. of play if they tried to play it that way yep. with single coverage. Cool. All right, so that is our prediction. So we tip Tigers to win, we tip the Pies to win. Yep. So that sets a prelim of, is that Brisbane and Collingwood? If, I think so. Yeah, I think that's Brisbane and Collingwood. And then it will be a prelim of Richmond and Port. Yeah. Those are pretty good prelims. So mm. I, uh, I'll i be happy with whatever happens, to be honest. Now my boys are out. So. Yeah. Cool. Just right. in as a neutral bystander at this point. Yeah, that's all right. It's not a bad way to be. Yeah. Although I'd rather not Do you want, <laughs> Welcome to the perennial. <laughs> yeah, the perennial neutral. The perennial neutral. Yeah. I heard that uh, the elimination final in Perth this week was Fremantle's high point. <laughs> Probably was for some <laughs> fair I events. got so many fucking messages from plebs. That are just, oh, oh, you guys missed. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, that was a fairly solid potty. Um, we'll be back next week, ideally, to do this all again for the prelim finals. Thank you, Bush. Bloody earth. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Ball Boy. We'll see also, you next Also, little shout out. We're probably doing our first ever live stream Saturday, game five of the NBA finals on the Outback Hoops Experience. Yes. You're talking about a different channel, Outback Hoops Experience. Yep. Go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Proud of you. Thanks, Dad.